<gasps> okay, that's awesome. Yeah, replace this as soon as you can. Ugh. Ah! 3080! 3080 is here. I have been waiting for this for ages. My delivery got delayed. Everyone else has got theirs and I was feeling so sad. But the day has arrived. And I know what you're thinking. Marcus, you, are you really just going to do an unboxing, really? And now you're probably thinking, is that his name, Marcus? I didn't know that. Well, now you do, and you're also going to know by the end of this video just how big this graphics card is and how it compares to all of last generation. Yeah? Yeah? Clever idea, no? But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Acer and the Predator Triton 500. This mesmerizing gaming laptop packs a truly bonkers 300Hz IPS display. Pair it up with the hyper-fast RTX 20 Super graphics, blazing quick Intel 10th generation processors, and PCIe NVMe storage. Purchase a Predator Triton 500 from participating retailers and receive £50 of Steam credit, a Predator backpack, and a three-year warranty, all worth over £200. Check it out today with that link down below. So let's start with the unboxing experience and there's not really that much to it. It's just a black box. I almost expected something a little bit more garish, nothing on any of the sides really. Drum roll please. Here we go then. I have not seen this yet. Oh, <gasps> okay, that's awesome. It's almost like a coppery gold. And it's not as big as I thought it was going to be either. And it's got fans on both sides. I almost completely forgot. I was too excited. Look at that. That is epic. Oh, it smells good as well. I mean, that's probably just the foam in the box, but I I'll, I'll take it. Look at this thing. That's really cool. So the main thing that you'll notice is that we do, of course, have the fans on both sides. That is the completely different thermal design that we see this year. As you can probably tell, this card is going to work slightly differently to normal because you're going to put it inside your case in this orientation. This fan is then going to draw air through it and then your rear case fan is going to exhaust that out the back. But then this fan here is going to do something similar except that fan is actually going to be channeling the air out of the back of your case. So you almost have two fans sort of working separately rather than working. And to give you a little bit of a... Comp to give you a little bit of a comparison then, you can see that we have completely different designs on both cards. I'm not sure which one I prefer, actually. I mean, this is definitely very timeless and I love just how well built it is as well. It feels fantastic. But in terms of thermal performance, it wasn't lacking. It was a lot better than the reference cards of old, but there definitely was a little bit more, I think, that could be done, which is why you'd use a custom card. Whereas with this one, I don't know, it looks really good. The only thing that concerns me a little bit is the placement of this brand new power connector. So here you can see there is a brand new power connection. This is the 12 pin, and you will need to use an adapter that does come in the box unless you buy an adapter for your existing power supply. But I imagine as time goes on, as new power supplies are released, we'll start to see this being a little bit more standard. Inside the box then, you have a load of documentation and probably some warnings. Yep, you have some warnings, but then this is the bit that we're most interested in. This is our little power adapter. It's a little Y cable. At the moment, you're going to have this in your case, and it's obviously going to look something along the lines of that. I don't know about you, but this is looking pretty ugly at the moment, and I guess those custom cables cannot come fast enough. To prove this point, let's grab some custom cables. Let's make it fair, let's go for white and black. It's quite funny because at the moment Nvidia have given me strict instructions that this card is not to be powered on, but they didn't mention anything about plugging it into nothing now, did they? I'm a very, very terrible listener when it's convenient for me. Right, so here we are then. This is currently what my PC would look like at the moment. You can see definitely room for improvement. Oh, if you have it like that, that really doesn't look very good at all now, does it? To the side maybe okay to the side is probably your best bet but yeah replace this as soon as you can Ugh. moving on though let's actually get you some measurements so that you know how big this card is we're looking at around about 28 and a half centimeters compare that to the 2080 ti and that's just under 27 centimeters so really not much in it at all interestingly there's also a little notch missing from the 3080 you can see right here at the top we have, I guess this is to make the card a little bit more secure, this notch, whereas it is completely missing here. I guess this aids compatibility with other cases and things. The thing that I'm really noticing with this card is that it does actually feel a lot lighter than the 2080 Ti. 
And this is mainly just because it's essentially all one massive heatsink. They've not put anything on here that doesn't need to be on the card. Something that I really don't like about this new card though is that we have dropped a connector. The USB 3.1 Type-C that's on the 2080 Ti is gone. And I'm not sure that this is really gonna bother most people, but it was always nice to have the option of using USB-C, especially if you're wanting to use like a VR headset or something. Here's another look at the size comparison, this time vertically. Pretty good. They are both exactly dual slot cards. Don't forget that the 3090 though will be a triple slot behemoth. So be aware of that if you're building in, I don't know, a really small case. Continuing our size comparisons then, let's go for a 2060 Super. So something you might be wanting to upgrade from. You can see that this is a much, much longer card. Much bigger. Vertically is definitely a uh, better way of showing you guys. You can see big, big difference there. I always liked the 2060 Super. I thought it was it was super cute. And a lot of people didn't like the uh, power connector being on the side. I don't know what it is about Nvidia about moving the power connector at the moment, but they're doing it. Do 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 do. I think the size comparison that you're probably really after though is against one of the third party really big boy cards from the previous generation. So this is a 2080 Super, something that you may well be upgrading from to a 3080 because you're gonna get around about double the performance. So Nvidia say uh, with this particular upgrade, this is huge in comparison with the 3080. Don't get me wrong, this is a big card, especially for reference but when you compare it to the behemoth that you can get from the likes of Asus, MSI, Gigabyte and the likes, there's not really that much comparison to be made. I mean, you can see it's not only a lot thinner, but it's also a lot shorter. So if you can fit this in your case, then this is really not gonna be a problem whatsoever. It's just so ridiculous though, the fact that Nvidia say, this is not from my testing, that this is gonna be around about half the speed of this. And this is way bigger. This is around about 33 centimeters long, just over, I think. And again, this one is about 29 and a half. So that is a big difference. What about a Strix card? Here we have a 2070 Super. In actual fact, the Strix card is around about the same sort of length. I think it is ever so slightly longer, but oh my God, if I'm gonna actually break graphics cards in this video, I am going to scream. The stress. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a little bit shorter. Really not that much in it, but it's when it comes to the thickness. This is still gonna fit in a lot of those ITX chassis, whereas this one definitely is not. I'd be interested to put this in an ITX chassis, actually. It'll be, be, be interesting to see how it performs. To prove this is not a NVIDIA-sponsored video, AMD is great, always buy AMD. I wonder what the performance difference is gonna be, actually, between this, the 5700 XT, and the 3080. These cards actually look fairly similar in size. Definitely a little bit longer, but about the same sort of weight. And obviously this one has one of the worst cooling solutions. And according to Nvidia, this has one of the best. Just for laughs. I mean, I say just for laughs, if you're upgrading from a smaller card, this will be a valid comparison. So I need to shut up. Ta-da! The Palette 1650 or 1650 Super, Nvidia's naming structure, hooray. And um, there's a bit of noticeable difference there. I mean, in terms of slots, about the same. Now there's not really that much more we're allowed to do. I cannot put this inside a computer and show you. So we're gonna get about as close to that as we possibly can. I can feel the Nvidia PR rep that's watching this going, don't show it Marcus, don't do it. Don't do it, we'll never send you a card ever again. So here we have one motherboard, not inside a chassis. This is just merely a motherboard near a graphics card. I wouldn't dream of plugging this into the slot. I'm just holding it nearby. Okay, so that's how much room you have. This is probably a better way of showing you. Look, there you go, definitely not plugged in. And that's about how much room you're gonna have to have the other side of your motherboard. You are looking for roughly, what's that? About four centimeters of clearance from your motherboard for the graphics card to sort of stick out. That, that's gonna be realistic, and that's the best I can do without breaking the violations and the NDA. The review is coming up very soon. Get subscribed to see that, by the way, if you haven't already. There'll be builds, there'll be builds, with performance. One more test that I would like to do, though. Here is 
a computer case and we are definitely not allowed under any circumstances to put the graphics card in the case. But again, we can just put it near the case. I can't see what I'm doing now. So this is the Corsair 280X and you can see that should fit in there with plenty of room to spare actually, not a problem whatsoever. Just be aware of clearance basically. And I think the overall consensus is that the 3080 is a big card, but it's not any bigger than any of the cards that you can buy on the market at the moment. Strix cards and things are definitely a lot bigger. Why am I still holding this? The main takeaway then is that you are going to have to get used to a pretty ugly power connector until you can buy some from the likes of Corsair, Be Quiet, whoever your power supply is with, but I'm sure they'll come very quickly. There's a lot of money to be made there. I wouldn't worry about being able to put this in your PC as long as your current PC does accommodate larger graphics cards. When I did my PC build, and you can see that in the top right hand corner, going through 3070, 3080 and 3090 builds, I was a little bit nervous about exactly how big this was gonna be, but this should fit in any normal sized gaming PC case that's not overly small. Like occasionally you might run into some issues with radiators and fans and things like that. Generally speaking, if you can fit like a Strix or a ridiculously sized uh, Gaming X from MSI, then this should be no problem. I'll leave links to all of these graphics cards down in that description below. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out the awesome Triton 500. Asus gaming laptop refreshes at a mind boggling 300 Hertz five times faster than your average screen, for smoothness that you simply have to feel to believe. Crush all of the latest titles with the RTX 2080 Super, 32GB of RAM, and 10th generation Intel processors. And even overclock it, on the fly, with one punch overclocking. Learn more about this incredible gaming laptop today with that link down below. Let me know your thoughts though down in that comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Let me know what you want to see in the full review of this card as well down in that comment section below. See some of the other videos that I've done all about Ampere as I say in the top round corner. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.